Introduction, ambulating with a gait belt. The term ambulate means to walk. A gait belt is a canvas belt that is secured around the patient's waist to help lift the patient to a standing position and provide security while walking to help prevent falls. The gait belt is strictly an assistive aid, not a restraint. They should never be used to tie a patient down. When used properly, they provide stability at the patient's center of gravity, which reduces injury to the patient and reduces falls. Without a gait belt, CNAs are forced to grasp a patient under the arms and pull them up to help them stand. This strains the muscles of the upper arms and shoulder joints. It can cause muscle and nerve damage, bruising, and joint problems. It also pulls the patient off balance. Gait belts are secured around the patient's waist snugly. You should be able to fit four fingers between the gait belt and the patient's abdomen. This makes the belt snug enough to be effective, but loose enough to be comfortable. Before helping a patient stand, you need to verbally acknowledge that the patient has shoes on. This tells the evaluator that you are aware of the safety aspects of this skill. Here's a story regarding the safety aspects of shoes in a clinical setting. A nurse named Amy was working in a nursing home when a CNA told her that the patient in room 102 had a foul odor, despite everything the CNA had done. The nurse went in to investigate. The nurse began looking closely at the patient, front and back, working her way down. When she got to the patient's legs, he said he didn't like anyone to touch his feet. The nurse noticed that the patient had slipper socks on. Amy, the nurse, knew that if the patient told the CNAs that he didn't want his feet touched, then the CNAs probably didn't inspect his feet or report the patient's refusal to the nurse. This was a prime clue for the nurse. The nurse explained that she would need to look at the patient's feet because she suspected there was a wound there. She explained why this was important and got the patient to agree. She took the sock off the left foot, but the right sock seemed stuck to the foot. As she was gently tugging on the right sock, she heard a ping and noticed a small metal object flinging from the bottom of the foot onto the floor. She turned and noticed a thumbtack on the floor. The patient had stepped onto a thumbtack at some point while walking in hospital socks. The socks did not protect his foot from the sharp objects, only from slips. Sharp objects are very common in healthcare. Needles, scalpels, glass vials, and yes, even thumbtacks are used frequently in healthcare establishments. These items can easily be dropped on the floor where the patients may step on them. Without hard-soled shoes to protect them, these objects can injure the patient's feet. Additionally, the floors in healthcare establishments are contaminated. As patients walk across the surface with socks, the socks become contaminated with all the pathogens from the floor. When they get back into bed, those socks remain on, and all the pathogens on the socks are now on the patient's sheets. Yuck! Shoes are an essential piece of safety equipment in a clinical setting. Walking a patient without shoes can lead to falls, wounds, and contamination. Whenever a patient's feet hit the floor, we talk about their shoes. Slipper socks alone do not offer enough protection. Anytime we stand a patient up from a sitting position, we need to ask if the patient is dizzy while they're standing next to the chair. If they are dizzy, they can sit immediately. We should also ask frequently how they're feeling as we walk to prevent falls. Lifting a patient from a sitting position with a gait belt requires good body mechanics to prevent injury to the patient or yourself. Pay attention to how the instructor positions herself slightly to the side of the patient and puts one foot in front of the patient's feet, bending her knees, not her back. In a clinical setting, the nurse will tell you how far the patient needs to walk. For the CNA test, this will be written on the care plan. You will be required to walk the patient approximately 20 feet, 10 feet in one direction and 10 feet back. You will assist the patient to a standing position and walk slightly behind into one side of the patient, holding the gait belt from behind. Let the patient lead at their own pace. When returning to the chair, make sure the patient can feel the chair on the back of his or her legs. This will help the patient trust you as you lower them into the chair at the end of the skill. Watch the instructional video and pay close attention to how to fasten the gait belt, 
lift the patient to a standing position, walk the patient, and lower the patient back to the chair. Practice this skill to master it.